Hello, I'm Tracy Dell from the Allergy Clinic and in this video I'm going to be explaining a little bit more about how skin testing works. So you tend to be sent for skin testing if you have issues with hay fever or allergic asthma, dermatitis or eczema, food allergies, a penicillin allergy or bee venom allergy and sometimes also if you have problems with household pets, cats and dogs, that type of thing depends on how severe your reactions are as to whether or not you will get referred through for a skin test. Do check that you will be eligible to have the test. You may have to wait some time before you get your appointment. In our local area at the moment, the waiting time is about six or seven months. And you wanna make sure that when you actually go for that appointment that you will be able to get tested. And there are some reasons why you can't get tested. So say, for example, if the reaction that you have to certain things means that you have really bad sensitive skin, they may not be able to test you. If you are taking certain medications, they may not be able to test you. So for example, if you have been taking um, antihistamines and they can be prescription or they can be over the counter, they may not be able to test you. If you are on certain antidepressants, that may inhibit actual reactions in your body, they may not be able to test you. Certain heartburn medications, they may not be able to test you. And also if you're on some asthma medications, they may not be able to test you. So particularly if your waiting time is a long time, you want to contact them beforehand to find out what the protocol will be if you are on any of those medications. They should check with you, but sometimes they don't. And if you've waited a long time for your appointment, it can be extremely frustrating. I've had some very unhappy parents that have waited a long time um, for their children to get tested and then found that they won't get tested because they were on a particular antihistamine, for example. Um, sometimes the, re the suggestion will be that you can come off that particular medication for a certain period before you get tested. And sometimes they will advise you that they would rather not do the test as you coming off that particular medication may do more harm than good. So for example, if you're on an asthma medication, sometimes it can be six months before it is okay for you to actually have the test done, the skin test done. And that's not gonna be okay for you if you, if you are a sufferer of asthma. So in that case, a skin test wouldn't be the most appropriate thing and they would potentially then put you forward for either blood testing or hair testing. So um, do check early on whether or not you're actually gonna get tested. Now, the next thing that should happen is when you go for the test, they should actually check to make sure in another way that you're okay to have the test. So say for example, um, uh, there's two tests that they will do. One will be histamine and uh, this should cause a skin response. So if you have histamine added onto your skin, there should be a reaction to it. And it will only be a slight bump, but if you don't get that reaction, then your skin test may not even re reveal your allergies, even if you have them. So you need to make sure that you have that test first, otherwise you could be given some false um, results. The other thing they need to do on you is a glycerin or a saline test. And again, that's just gonna be added to your skin. If you do get a reaction to that one, then they probably shouldn't go ahead with the test. The reason being is that your skin is incredibly sensitive. If you're somebody that's got sensitive skin, then by doing a skin allergy test, again, you may get false positives. Your body may be reacting to the carrier in the test rather than the actual um, thing that they're testing for, the element that they're testing for. So you need to make sure when you're going for your test that they're gonna do both a histamine test and a glycerin or saline test on your skin before they go any further forward. If they're not gonna offer you that option, you may get false responses, so it's worth checking. When you do go ahead and have your skin test, it will either be on your arm, and with children they do it on the back because then they can't really see what's going on. Sometimes they will do them as individual dots and sometimes it will be a, a whole plate of needles that will just very gently go onto your back or onto your arm and then come back up again. So they do quite a lot at one time. The maximum they normally test for is 50, but in most cases they will do less than that. So the reactions will happen pretty, uh, pretty quickly and it will normally just be a bump. And you will know just by looking at your arm or seeing what's happening on your back with a mirror, what's happening. And they will have you in the hospital, in the department, waiting for those reactions to happen. They won't normally send you home. They want to record those results there and then. 
And of course, another reason for that is if, for example, they're doing nut allergy, sometimes even a very small amount of a particular item can cause you to have an anaphylactic shock. So that needs to be done in hospital for them to be able to deal with that. So once you do get a reaction, it will be measured and recorded by the nurse or the doctor that's working with you. And then they will be able to give you ongoing advice as to how they're going to manage that with you. So that will either be taking medication, it could be elimination, it could be managing diet, it could be all sorts of things depending on what's happening. When it comes to skin issues, if you have eczema, etc., particularly with children, be very careful with regards to the lotions and potions that you're putting on. And I'll cover that in a different video, so look out for that one. But I wanted to mention that because sometimes um, some clinics will be very quick to recommend um, lotions that actually can give further irritation and won't allow the skin to heal. So I really wanted to flag that one up with you. If you have a skin test, sometimes the clinic will follow it up with a blood test. Now, this can be quite interesting because when your body has a reaction to something, it will try and fight it. So in the first instance, you'll see a reaction on the skin. And when you have a blood test, you should see the actual reaction. The skin should be mirrored by the blood test. So um, somebody um, uh, that I know who has got a very strong allergic to, um, in fact, it's one of our receptionists, has a very strong reaction to nuts. And when she went for her tests at the um, hospital clinic, they did the skin test first of all, and um, that she had a very strong reaction on her arm. And when they did the blood test, it came back as negative, which can be very confusing. And the reason for it was that her body has such a strong allergic reaction, it fights it and it almost like dumbs it down as quickly as possible. So by the time 20 minutes later or so that they actually took the blood test, the body had almost tried to, it had tried to eradicate every single element of this particular allergy. So it gave a false reading. So my recommendation is that if you're going to have a skin and a blood test, you have them on different days. Make two different appointments. That's what we always recommend. We won't do blood testing on anybody that's had skin testing within a few days because we want to make sure that the body is clear of any reaction so that we can get the most accurate result that we possibly can. So if you have any questions as to how this testing works, ideally you need to speak to the person that's referred you so um, that would normally be your doctor if you're if you're a parent and it's your child that's going for the testing it may be your pediatrician um, it may be your skin specialist um, we don't offer as i said the skin testing in our clinic but we will offer the follow-on testing which will be blood or hair testing depending on your age and your requirements if you have any further questions though please do come back to us and we'll try and help you as much as we can the links will be pinned at the top of the of the comments so that you can contact us if you have any questions. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks, bye-bye.